My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking, um, well let's just, kick the, let's just kick this video off where it started. So there's a guy who's turned into a bit of a cunt called um, Moderate FKR, I'm sure that's his name. So he's got, he's a dog with a bone at the moment, which is fair enough, I like these guys, it's another Dan Henderson, or Mr. Rex, Mr. Rex Quando. Um, so he's on about anodizing. Oh Matt, you've got it wrong. And there's some other guy who also said that I've got it backwards. Um, uh, you haven't fully explained. Whoa, 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 whoa. That video was titled, and I've said this in the comments, that video was titled um, An Anodizing Aluminium and Why We Do It. It's more why we do it than the process. There was a lot of things I didn't talk about in that video. Um, I didn't talk about, uh, well, what's an anode and what's a cathode, which way the current goes. I didn't talk about voltage. I didn't talk about what kind of organic acid you need to use. I didn't talk about agitation and hydrogen bubble forming. I didn't talk about anything of the chemistry, um, why it has to be in an aqueous solution. I didn't talk about what your cathode should be. You know, it was a basic explanation really quickly of what, how we get the dye in there and so forth. So, if you want the explanation, and this is the other thing, is I've done this before, that's the other thing, is it's not just I looked on Wikipedia for five seconds and goes, I'll do a video about that. I've done this before. Here's some clips of me doing both electrolysis and some nickel plating. And caustic soda's bad shit for your hands. So, uh, acid, as you can see. So what we're doing now is we're etching the part People are not going to like this, but shit happens. This is what I do. Wrap some sold around the threads. This is 60 degrees. You can see I've got the thermal couple in there. And what I'll do is attach my solder to a negative. Pop this in. Like so. Sheen to it. So what we'll do is we'll take off our solder, like so, put that to one side, give this a bit of a, a light scrubbing with some clean wire wool. Solution of water with this sodium carbonate basically just makes the water conductive or increases the conductivity of the water higher than normal water is. So I'm just lifting the fume cover just so you can see better. And as you can see, it's a bit milky because of the calcium carbonate because we live in a hard water area. But as you can see, and hopefully here, it's fizzing away nicely. But anyway, I've done anodizing before as well. In the past, I've just never recorded it because I've never really had the setup to sit there and go through it all. But anyway, uh, which is something we will do. We will go through a shop. Um, some of the best ways. I didn't talk about brighteners. I didn't talk about the pH balance, I didn't talk about um, buffers, um, adding salt as an electrolyte, and we go on. But anyway, so the problem these two guys had... Oh, I've put the fucking... I put the red in the blue and the blue in the red again. <sighs> and so this is going to change colour. So, the aluminium, right? the aluminium here like this and I said very quickly that basically what you do is you have an oxide layer and you blow that oxide layer off and then you um, basically make pores in the actual oxide layer at the top and then that's where the dye goes. I did a fucking thing with a human pore, very shit and all the rest of it. Yeah, I didn't explain it fully but it's not entirely wrong because and he's going to go, oh, you're doing a 180 now, you've changed what you said. Well, because it was just a simple, off the top of my head, really quick explanation. So people understand basically what anodizing is. So, what you have <laughs> is you have, let's just say, a block of aluminium like this, right? And you have an oxide layer around this, right? So this is AL2... Uh, uh, is it two or three? It's O3, isn't it? There we go. O3, like so. And then this is just your aluminium in here. Now, the other thing I didn't mention is that it's generally never pure aluminium. It's usually always an alloy. Uh, alloyed with silicon. 
and all sorts. Now, usually castings don't like to be anodized. Castings don't like to be anodized because they have a higher silicon content. Um, the hypertetric alloys of pistons, as an eutectic, fucking hell, um, alloys that they use in pistons and so on. So you have your aluminium like this. Usually, it has a wire on it or something like that because you need some electrical um, connection. And then you have a cathode. Let's do this a different colour. You have a cathode. Now, anodizing comes from the word uh, an anode <coughs> because your aluminium is the anode. Right? And this is your cathode. And how do you remember which way around it is? Was it panic? I can never remember what panic means. <laughs> Positive anode, negative ca cathode. <laughs> I can't remember what the I means. I'm sure someone told me what the I means. So this is your positive side. This is your negative side. And um, what happens in this whole process is that you shed electrons. Your anode sheds electrons. Um, so uh, a good example is uh, scanning electron microscopes, SEMs. Um, they have a tungsten filament. And once you juice that up, um, it releases shitloads of electrons. A thing that's better than that is Lab 6, but we're not going to get into hexaboride and all the rest of it because that's well out of the scope of this. And then what you have is you have a solution. You have um, an aqueous solution. So this is generally, most of the time, we use sulfuric acid. Um, sulfuric acid. Which is... Um, Generally, they go for about, I think it's thirty-three percent acid, and the rest, you know, the sixty-six, sixty-seven percent uh, water. Your cathode can be a lot of things. Generally, you use a cathode that is not susceptible to the actual acid itself. You can use aluminium. That's a bit of a you get a bit of a shit anodizing if you use aluminium. Uh, a lot of times they use uh, graphite rods, so carbon. Um, stainless steel. When I've done it, I've used stainless steel, and I've also used lead as well. Um, but basically this is usually a material that is um, not susceptible to the acid. Where were we? Oh yes! Bloody fucking has it. Um, <laughs> right then. So. Oh, where are we? Yes, so what does this do? You know, what does all this do? We've got the sulfuric acid, we've got aluminium, we've got this oxide layer that's already on there, because, like I say, and someone did say, I have polished aluminium and it will sit there for weeks and day days and weeks polished. Ah, no, that's already aluminium oxide. There is a difference between, so if you have an aluminium surface like this, it's already oxidised, that's it. Unless you basically strip it back and keep it in a non-oxygen rich atmosphere, it will stay aluminium oxide. There will always be this fucking layer. It's like if you try and separate water off anything, right? Everything has got this thin two or three atom, or molecule should I say, five or six molecule thick layer of water on fucking everything. It's actually almost, it's ridiculously expensive and hard. Fucking hell. It's ridiculously hard and expensive to get water off stuff. But anyway, so you've got this oxide layer, um, this oxide layer here, so this is 3 alley 2 there we go, um, on everything. When you see things corrode with aluminium, that's because of in further increased crystal growth. The problem with aluminium oxide is, is its lattice, its lattice structure is different from aluminium, the actual metal, and um, aluminium oxide's adhesion, it's something to do with Gibbs free energy, and diffusion of more oxygen through the crystalline structure causes it to crack and crumble off. It's quite brittle stuff. It doesn't stick to itself very well when you build up so many layers because it has this porous nature. But it, I say porous nature, it's the way the crystals align and blah, 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 blah. But basically what you have is you have this. Now, if you just stick this in, in water or something shit like that, or you basically just have this within water without the acid, then nothing really happens that quick. What we need to do is we need to break through this layer. Why? Well, because of the reaction. So if we remove this and I put the reaction up, this will make it probably a bit clearer. Um, so it's two aluminium plus three, uh, what is it? H2O, I did write this down so I didn't fuck it up. Um, this equals 
uh, aluminium 2, oxygen 3, um, plus 6 hydrogen, um, plus 6 electrons. And uh, the cathode, we're not going to fucking bother doing that. So basically this is the reaction of what you have to do. You've got your aluminium, your water with your H2O in, your aluminium, your oxygen and your hydrogen. So the electrolysis bit is this bit. This bit is getting your um, H2O. Uh, fuck it, I always do that wrong. <laughs> I know what H2O is, it's when I come to draw it and I start thinking about the size of how big a hydrogen is to an oxygen. It's, it's written up there, you fucking idiot. Look, so it's oxygen to hydrogen and I've put the pen in the wrong bloody holder again. Um, so it's the electrolysis, that's it. It's splitting this up. It's sticking a pair of scissors in here and splitting this up. And we do this basically with energy, with electricity. So we split this up and then because we do this, we have some of these free electrons kicking around. Um, but have you noticed that we need this? We need aluminium. So you basically don't, you have to get to the pure aluminium. So you'll see drawings like this, where it shows you just an aluminium layer building up. It's not like that. Basically, there's your aluminium. Let's just do a line like that. What happens is, is an aluminium layer of oxide forms, but it eats into the material. So if this is Ali, this is Ali, and this is Ali, and then these boxes here represent the oxide, you can see what's happening. Right, it is eating in to the aluminium. We have to be very careful actually when you do anodizing that you have to spec your bolts to the finished size. If you anodize fittings, bolts, anything that's press fit that's been anodized, hard anodized, people did ask what hard anodizing is. Hard anodizing is less to do with making it look pretty and more to actually build up a very a thicker aluminium oxide layer. But what I'm saying is, is you need the sulfuric acid. I'm not gonna put this in the wrong fucking hole, am I? Uh, um, you need the aluminium to react with the oxide, the ox the oxide, the oxygen. This hydrogen can fuck off. Two um, two hydrogen squareds equals six, so that's where you get that from. And this three oxygens there is that three oxygens there. But you need the aluminium um, to react. You just need the aluminium. You need to get in there and get at the aluminium. That's what the sulfuric acid is. So in a sense, what you do is you have to blow through, <laughs> you have to blow through this oxide layer to get at the aluminium. Um, as you start to dissolve aluminium out of the oxide layer, this oxygen, because you've stripped off the hydrogen, this is why you get hydrogen bubbles and they all piss away, hopefully, especially if you use agitation. Um, once you strip away that hydrogen, this free oxygen then reacts with this um, aluminium, this aluminium that's starting to be dissolved in a way, put into solution, and then that deposits and grows and builds you a layer. But it is a process of not building a layer up, it's a process of eating down and building up. It's a bit of both. So when I said that, there was nothing wrong with saying that in a very simple explanation. This is how these things work. Um, I've got it I've got it written down just so I don't forget. The um, And at the cathode, this is why it's important that you have a cathode that doesn't really react, because you don't want that to become a solution. If you look at your, um, if you look at your, uh, what you've got in your anodizing bath, you have aluminium, you have water, and then you have your cathode, which is just, so let's just say that's lead, right? So where's the aluminium coming from? Sometimes when you do copper plating, I've done copper plating and stuff like that, and nickel plating, the actual solution um, you put, because if you're trying to nickel plate a bolt, so let's just say this is steel, let's just say this is steel, and you're trying to plate it with nickel or copper, then the nickel or the copper have to be in solution, have to be in the the jar that you're doing it in to then plate this with whatever you want. The other thing is as well as a lot of the time is you can actually have a, if you're doing nickel just say, you actually have a nickel cathode, uh, anode sorry, the other way around. Um, but that's what you have to do, you have to have these things to do these processes. 
with our uh, anodizing, there is not added aluminium into the bath. That's not the way it works. We're trying to build up an oxidization layer, but we need to, it's aluminium oxide that we're trying to make. So I get where you guys are coming from, but it's not the whole process. Uh, again, I haven't, we haven't touched anything here. I haven't really spoke about uh, brighteners, buffing agents, what different organic acids you can use. I haven't, you know, and there's no point because until I have it in front of me, it's easier just to show you that way instead of just wanging on about chemistry or basic chemistry on here like I did it. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.